I was raised and born in California, up in East LA. Um, as we call it, the projects came from nothing. An alcoholic dad, um, a very hard loving working mother that tried to do her best to keep her husband, but as an alcoholic, I guess he never learned to know what he had, what was good in his life. Uh, he knew uh, pain, he knew how to um, torture us, how to beat us. That was the love he knew because of alcohol. I didn't hate my dad. I, I really loved my dad. I never understood why he hated me. I had a brother and a sister. He favored more my brother. He favored my sister. I was the only one that was always rejection, rejected. Of course, there's always a black sheep in the, in the family, and I was the black sheep. My dad and I would fight. We would get into some fights, and, and, and I mean fights. Like, you just meet somebody at the bar, in the club, in the streets, and you just start swinging. And the only reason was because he used to hit my mother, and he had punched her in the mouth. And that's when I came from behind him. I grabbed a chair, and I slammed it behind him in the, in the head. He didn't even know where he was at. So when he finally came back to reality to see what happened, and he looked at me and he said, oh, you hit me. But he didn't approach me, he went straight to the room. I already knew where his rifle was at. So when he ran to the room, I ran outside. I ran downstairs. And by the time I ran downstairs and I was running, he opened the door. And next thing you know, he had his rifle with, had a 16 shot rifle. And next thing you know, all I hear him is shooting. Pow, 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 pow. I looked at him and I can see the fire coming out of the rifle. And I felt something in my leg and it felt hot. Picked up my leg by my pants and I can see the hole on my leg. Second time again, I caught him hitting my mother. So I went, this time I didn't grab anything but I grabbed his shirt, I grabbed him off my mother and I dragged him. I dragged him all the way to his room and I threw him right there on the floor and then I kicked him in his head. And he had his machete in between his mattress. So when he, I seen his hand and pulled the machete out, that's when I ran. And when I ran, I guess he, he, he reacted this time so fast that by the time I opened the door and I looked towards him, he's coming at me. And when I duck, the machete just goes right over my head and hits the wall. So this time it was more like he put his foot down and said, you know what, don't come back home ever. My dad kicked me out at the age of 10 years old. Um, that's when I had nothing in my life. I didn't know how to, how to work because I was too young to work. I had to find love somewhere else. My friends and my family was the gang outside. Of course, they jump us in, and from that point on, when you get jumped in into the family, you right away are introduced to guns and drugs and money and, and cars and, and women, and so that's the life that, 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 that woke me up that I thought that was gonna make me happy. Matter of fact, I started stealing cars, stealing stereos. Um, and for the first time is when I wind up being in, in jail, which is called juvenile hall for kids, for young people. Uh, the first day I landed there, I did six months. From their point on, I kind of learned the bad ways of the jail and to learn how to survive and how, how to be a tough guy that we call it. Of course, after walking in a rebellious way, you know, you're just not gonna get away with a lot of things. And I wind up, of course, being in prison, um, attempted murder and, and drive-bys and whatnot. So I finally got caught and, you know, I pretty much, if you don't take the blame for somebody else, then the big guys are gonna take you out in prison. Your softness and everything, you better leave at the door when you're walking into the prison. Even if somebody gives you a dirty look, you better take care of that, because they're gonna handle you. I went to the bathroom and uh, I remember washing my hands and then I remember a voice saying, turn around. When I turned around, there was this guy coming at me with a, with a, with a shanker. He was getting ready to slice my throat open. 
and I fought him. And I did what I had to do to protect myself and to get out of there. I got the cuts, I got all the cuts here in my hand when I was trying to get the knife in him. I hated myself. Um, once again, I od three times and, and, and I tried to commit suicide. I tried to hang myself. I tried to jump off the, the buildings during the projects. Whatever, you know, um, whatever I, 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 I just didn't care about life. I wanted to take my life so bad. So we will um, sit, get drunk, get high, and we'll pull out a gun. And we'll put a bullet or two in there and play Russian roulette, we'll spin it. We'll grab it and tap, tap. I grabbed that gun and I clicked it twice. When they opened that gun to spin it again, when I clicked it, when I clicked it twice, that second click, that bullet should have came out. To get to the store, we had a there was a little alley that goes down which was on the other side, it was the park, and then you, it's a shortcut to get up the hill. But as I was starting to kind of walk into this alley, and this voice says, don't go in there. Deep voice, which I recognize now, that was God. And I decided to go around the other way. But as I was coming down from the store, there was a police station, I mean the police ambulance, I mean there was tape, everything was shut down. And when I looked, there was somebody laying dead in that alley. Somebody was stabbed to death. I did drugs, but I never did heroin. The belt was tied up, my sleeve was up, to get ready to inject this heroin in there. And a loud voice said, no. That really scared me. And I said, you know what, no. And I, I walked away from there, and I never went back to that crowd again. Then later on, the Lord spoke to me and showed me that was going to be my last day when that heroin was sh going to be shot up in my veins. Because for me being a first-timer, he had overloaded it. I, I should have been gone a long time ago, especially when two guys also in the streets, they, they robbed me because I had selling drugs and whatnot. I had drugs and money in my pocket, so they came out of nowhere too and just hit me from the back, stomp on me. They dragged me to the tr corner of the trash can. They broke a bottle, and I remember the guy that put his foot behind my back, grabbed me by the hair, lift up my neck, and I remember him having the bottle and he's getting ready to slice my throat from one year to another. And to a neighbor that popped out and said, hey, what are you doing? I know him. They dropped everything and they left. A Friday came and you know everybody, when you were in the world, hey, Friday's come, it's time to get dressed up, it's time to party, because Fridays and Saturdays were the party days. But that Friday, I just, my, my heart, my, my spirit, my mind, it's it, something just, when that morning, it was just something like, I just felt that I, I wasn't supposed to leave the house. Friends started banging in the door. Pom, 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 pom. Hey, what's up? You coming out or what? Something told me, don't respond to them. Don't answer the door. At the third time, when I was about to get up and try to respond and answer the door, a voice said, if you leave tonight, you're not coming back home. So, you know, what I did was I just laid in the couch. I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna lay here. And boom, I, I just fell asleep. When I fell asleep, not, not, I don't know how long I was asleep, but all I know and I remember is that when I closed my eyes, as soon as I closed my eyes, I opened my eyes. I can see myself laying in the couch. And my face was stuck in the ceiling. I was upside down. And next thing you know, I stopped moving in circles slowly, but I'm going faster. 
and faster and fast. And, I, and I'm starting, I'm, I'm speeding up here. And the faster as I'm going, I can hear these voices, real demons, like wicked voices just laughing at me. Next thing you know, I find myself in this dark place. Dark. Like this light just started shining and it allowed me to see these things. And then and suddenly, I see five demons. Five demons that are around me. And what I can see with these demons is that some of them have real big mouths, like rats. Some of them look like bats. And some of them were pretty much different deformed, kind of very scary. And their eyes were like a very wicked, evil, yellow, red, and green. I remember that. And all they were doing, they were laughing. They were like, I can hear this clearly, like if it was yesterday. And then I look in front of me and I see this big black tunnel. And I can hear the tunnel going. And I'm floating on the air and I'm moving forward. As I'm going into this tunnel, I see a tiny little light at the end. So when I see that little light, I'm like, I'm, I'm safe. Oh, I'm gonna be all right. So when I got to the end of this tunnel, the light is gone. So now everything's quiet. I don't see anything, no one. And I'm standing there. And next thing you know, this fire just came out of nowhere. And it went straight up. And then, you know, in the mornings, you open your curtains in the mornings. Well, this is how the fire is split in half. When that fire opened up, a voice said, look in there. When I took a forward look, I, I, I moved forward to look, you can see these people burning and burning and burning. And then you can hear, clack, 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 clack. But that's the flesh that's coming off of you. And I can see maggots, real big maggots just going through them and going through their brains and going through their heads, going through their, and through their eyes and going through their nose. You can, I can see all this thing happening and they're, and they're just screaming and screaming and screaming. And then there was like, there was like caves and there were like cells. Um, there was more trees that were just dead. The air there was, I mean, there's no air to breathe. I mean, there's, it's, it's suffocating in there. There was no water, there's no food, there's no sleep. There's no rest. This is day and night, day and night. Demons are there morning, swing ship, and graveyard. Day and night, they're torturing you. They're torturing you in every which way. They can tear you apart in pieces. They use swords or they just use their power because that's how big they are. They can put their hands over your head and just squeeze it. They can tear your head off. They can tear your body. They'll cut you to pieces. And every piece in your body and everything, you're aware. And I was scared. I was crying. I was crying. I remember I kind of, I bowed my, I, 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 I kind of like a like little bubble and I was crying because I didn't know where I was at still. I had no idea what was going on. And next thing you know, this big light comes, appears to me, a, a bright, bright light on my right hand side. And this light, as soon as the light hit me, this peace came over me. And I see this big, tall, beautiful angel, about seven, eight foot angel, big, real long, beautiful blonde hair. And he had this smile, like he was so peaceful. It was such an amazing peace. I, you know, I, I, I knew it was an angel because, I mean, you can't miss that. Um, and he had a big sword, the sword of fire. And he spoke to me. He said, Mario, he said again, Mario. And I didn't want to move. I didn't want to look because I was already afraid. I don't know if these things were going to snag me back into that place. He said, it's okay, look. And this peace came over me. And I kind of got up and I looked at him. He goes, do you know where you're at? I said, no. I shook my head, no. He said, if today was your day, he said, this would be your portion. This where you would spend eternal life. This is hell. He says, you are in hell. He said, who's your God? I said, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't answer him. I just shook my head. I don't know. 
And then a little window opened up. And I remember Ronnie and Ron, Donnie and Ron, I, I, how can I forget them? Those are the ones that used to pick us up in the church bus. They used to come pick us up. They used to come up to me with their Bibles open and say, hey, Jesus loves you. When they said Jesus loves you, the window closed. And the angel asked me again, who's your God? I said, Jesus. He said, scream it. Scream it out loud, he said. I said, Jesus. And it just his name just echoed through these tunnels. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then that's when I, I woke up. I remember waking up. And I remember those two brothers, those two brothers again, when they said, when I said to Jesus when I was eight years old, but I walked away. Come into my heart. I, re, I repent and I ask for your forgiveness. And I remember those and I got on my knees and I looked up to the heavens and I said, please forgive me, Lord. Forgive me of all of my sins. I repent. Come into my heart, I said. And when I said come into my heart, I, there's like electricity buzzing noise from inside of my feet. It just zzz, came out. And from that point on, this peace came over me. I couldn't stand drugs. I couldn't stand um, alcohol. I couldn't stand cigarette. I couldn't stand anything. I was delivered. And I felt that day, that night, like, I never did drugs, I never smoked, I never drank. I felt like a brand new man. In 2004, when I was asleep at my home one day and God sent an angel to my home and shot me up to the heavens. And that's where I knew my walk, the prophetic walk that I had with God. Because when he came to me, when I seen the heavens and I seen his I seen the mountains and I seen the rivers and I seen the fruit and I seen the angels and I seen kids and I seen how beautiful it was up there and the love that's up there is an amazing love. But when this angel took me up to the heavens and I seen God's throne in the middle, in the center of the temple of God's people, angels blowing the trumpets, it's such as everybody think God's quiet. No, God's a loud God. He's praising which worship everything every day and day day there's no dark there's no night up there there's no darkness just joy just love just peace this love was overwhelming that I, you know I thank God for allowing me to bring that he allowed me to bring some of the, that, that love back into the world I said and that's when I knew my walk was with God when he came to me I couldn't see him from his face but I seen him from his mouth down and his sandals and the hose in his hands and he spoke to me, he said, he said, my son, you have been sent by me. He says, I called you before placing in your mother's womb and out of your mother's womb I have called you. And I'm gonna move you into the nations and wherever I take your feet, you're gonna deliver my word. He says, I called you and I showed you these things, heaven and hell, because I want you to let my people know that it's real. Worry not and fear not what people think about you. The rest is in the palm of my hands. All you need to do is let them know the truth about heaven and hell. And the rest is in my hands. He says, I have ordered me a prophet. And I will move you in a mighty powerful way. That you, your own eyes, will not believe how I will move you to the nations. He says, go, my son. Go. Rejoice in my name, he says. And go and let my people know that I'm coming. Let them know that I am at the gate. And my angels are already preparing their horses and their carriages and sharpening their swords. Go. And I don't want to come back. God knows our thoughts before we think them. He says, your time is not yet with me, my son. But you will be with me soon. He says, go. And then with the palm of his hand, he touched my forehead. Boom. And I went, oh. And I came to my, back to my body at home. It was about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I remember I couldn't go back to sleep no more because the joy of God was over me. I was praising the Lord. I was crying. I was full in the Spirit of God. And I couldn't wait to get to work to speak to all these Mormons because there was nothing but Mormons. They, they, they believe in different than what we believe. One God, one throne, one accord. 
We don't add, we don't take from the Word of God, but we believe in the fullness of the Bible from A to Z. But you know what? I praise God because that fire and that joy and that power of Him, I thank Him because He allowed me to move into that building where we worked at. And every Mormon that was there dedicated their life to the truth of repentance to God. And I got a hold of them not too long ago that now they're serving the truth God in the right way that God needs to be served. God is good and God is real. So we just need to call on Him, be strong, because no matter what you're going through, at the most, the most at least that you feel alone, that's when God is with you more. He loves us, He's always with us.